Jay's okay. SVP and general manager of technology solutions and uh, Wow, we've, uh, we're in day three at uh, SAP Sapphire. Is that NetWeaver, basically? Is that the NetWeaver stuff? Is that uh, Yeah, it's right on uh, technology for SAP, and that includes NetWeaver, plus it includes uh, other technology products as well, like uh, mobility, database, um, you know, and, and some other products as well. Cool. Okay, so, um, so we've been talking about a variety of things. I mean, first of all, Mobile and, and HANA are getting all the attention here. You know, we, right. we always try to evaluate the effectiveness as a, of a company's messaging by how much the customers at an event like this you know, buy into the, yeah. to the concepts. And yeah. we're hearing a lot about mobile and, and HANA. Uh, we just had uh, CIO on, um, Andreas Berg, and he was saying, first I've heard about HANA, but I'm really interested in it and how it can affect my business. Okay, so we're here with Sanjay. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE.TV, the worldwide leader in live event coverage. This is the Cube, our flagship uh, telecast, where we go on the ground at events and we extract the knowledge and the news, talk to the most powerful guests we can get, and talk tech in depth. And Sanjay obviously runs technology at SAP. We're excited to, to sit down with you and, and talk about this. The HANA buzz, we're getting people saying, you don't need HANA, you don't need HANA. Uh, we got Dennis Hallett, who commented earlier about the uh, gold mine that the Sybase acquisition truly was. Dave and I were just talking about right. how forward thinking uh -huh. uh, you guys were right. to get that. And Sybase, where'd that come from? The database wars were just kind of be heading into that unstructured structured. You guys have this in memory and with all the Sybase, with the mobility. I mean, are you guys excited? First, tell us, when, how do you feel on the integration and what's happening? Uh, it's, it's, it's been amazing. So basically, as you said, you know, the combination here is, you know, you talk a, talk a lot about how when you have mergers and acquisitions, you have synergy. I think this really defines it because for us, uh, we've got, uh, you know, 40,000 customers with uh, our applications. And uh, what better way than now to complement that with mobility and make that accessible to, to everyone, casual users, users who are out on the road and so forth. So it's huge for us. Furthermore, there's also a lot of synergy between the mobility capabilities and some of our other products in, in the NetWeaver area in terms of integration, in terms of managing business processes, in terms of portal. So, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous fit, not just with our applications, but also with our um, NetWeaver technology portfolio. We've had um, Jim Snape on theCUBE, we've had a, a lot of the EVPs and SVPs can come in as well, and um, the buzz around social BI, as well as some of the platform stuff. But one of the comments was, um, SAP is a solutions company. Because I asked the question, what technology are you guys driving that's the, 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 the pivot and the, the lever for you? And, and the comment was, we're a solutions company. But there's a lot of technology. You've got a diversity of technologies. How are you managing that? Talk about some of the core tech you have and what yes. are the other technologies that you're kind of assembling because it yeah. really is a mashup of multiple tech. Exactly. Could you just summarize what are the yeah. core elements, the levers, and, the, and then what do you bring underneath that? Absolutely. So first of all, let me just uh, talk to you a little bit about how we we position technology with customers, right? So um, our customers have the enterprise applications from SAP, and these pretty much implement best practice business processes depending on which industry you are. But when the, so that's the good part of it. But also customers want to differentiate, right? They, don't, they want to have processes and capabilities that are unique to their business that the next competitor in the same industry doesn't have. So that's where technology comes. I thought in. Nick Carr said that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> that's what customers want to do, and that's, that's why he's a pundit. We're on record as saying that's sorry, why he's a, you were wrong about that. That's why he's a pundit. Look at not Google. A, that's why he's a pundit, not a tech athlete like these executives. I mean, you guys are tech athletes, so sorry. you know. Go ahead. That's right. You know. So, so what they do is they build around our applications unique capabilities. So. Uh, give you an example. Uh, I was talking to a consumer packaged goods company just just two weeks back, and they've got you know all the capabilities they need for consumer packaged goods in our in our industry. But when you're a CPG company, uh, every time you uh, introduce a new product, uh, there's a whole NPI process, new product introduction. And these these guys have hundreds of products, and they make you know literally 50 to 100 new product introductions every month because anytime you change a packaging on a jar of of uh, coffee, it's a new product. It's a new product. Yeah. And the impact of their supply chain is probably significant, right? Exactly, and then it takes uh, something like 70 days to simply enter all the screens in the applications to uh, get this product out of the door. So what they did was to take NetWeaver business process management and constructed their own flexible, easy to use uh, process that they did that within 10 days, right? So that's huge. Yeah. So that's an example of how uh, you, know, you take technology and apply that on top of a standard best practice process to make it more differentiated and unique to the customer. So that's the, that's what we are all about. And we've got many different capabilities within technology. We have technology that enables our users to collaborate. So like the NetWeaver portal, 
uh, like enterprise workspaces, which allows customers to share information. Like you and I, if we find something of interest, we can share that and create our own workspace. So those are the collaboration set of products. Then we've got mobility that you've heard so much about uh, over here, right? Uh, furthermore, we have enabled customers to adapt to changing conditions, whether it's a competitive situation or a threat or whatever. And we do that through our business process management products for flexible business processes, like I described with this uh, consumer packaged good company. You can integrate heterogeneous applications together. You can also create new applications. Um, there was a retailer I was uh, talking to in, uh, in the UK, and what they want to do is to build a set of merchandising applications around the SAP. Unique to them, provides differentiation, and so we provide the platforms so that they can build out these capabilities. And finally, we have a set of capabilities to operate better in terms of reducing your, uh, your, your, your costs. And uh, one of the big things that's happening, as you all know, is virtualization, right? And so while we are not a virtualization company, the, one of the key capabilities you need to virtualize effectively is really understanding the workload of your applications and the lifecycle management around it in terms of how you maintain it and upgrade it and so forth. So in collaboration with the key virtualization players like VMware and so forth, we can deliver a more effective solution. So this is an example, yeah. you were asking me about what's a solution versus yeah. technology. Yeah, yeah. Here's something that in combination, we can create a more effective solution than is possible. Where does business process fit? I mean, we all remember the, the, the business process reorganization trend in, yeah, the, in the 90s, yeah, and yeah. billions were made off of that, yeah. and as we go to the cloud and we go to the mobility, is, are we going to see another significant step function in the business process uh, uh, change? Yeah, so so you might be referring to the business process re-engineering yeah. <laughs> yeah. things in the in the 19, yeah. 90s where not only a lot of money was spent, but not very effectively, right? <laughs> that's right, yeah. uh, And so, no, that's not what we're talking about here. We are talking talking about really identifying specific processes that provide, that the company identifies that they need to either differentiate on or re-engineer to be competitive, right? Whereas the past, in the past, this was like boiling the ocean. So that, that obviously didn't work. So very tactical, focused, very focused, uh, surgical. Exactly. Yeah. We're we're here live. We have 16, 1,700 people watching right now live okay. simultaneously, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the folks are 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 consumer tech gamers. And and I want to. Uh, we're SiliconAngle.com, the reference point for tech innovation. We're here with the Cube live at SAP Sapphire in Orlando with Sanjay, who's the uh, head executive for the technology process at SAP. Uh, you guys are bigger than Disney. This company's bigger than Disney on a market cap basis, or R roughly, you know, roughly neck and neck, depending <laughs> on which, how the wind's blowing. I think today they might be up, um, but uh, huge company. You power 70% of all the beer that's drunk out in the, in the marketplace we and like chocolate. That um, <laughs> so for the folks out there um, who are watching, SAP's big innovation is this in-memory. And um, when people think of in-memory, they think of things like Facebook has this custom-built system to make it really fast, and um, solid-state memory out there is kind of a trend. Share with the folks um, out here the big advancements with the analytics and the speed. Because what we're hearing from uh, enterprises who are becoming more consumerized, agile is the key. They want to be agile. They don't want more hardware and middleware. They want to be faster. They want to be agile with their business. Any quotes of numbers? I mean, we're seeing these numbers being thrown around with the in-memory that things are happening what, months, weeks, now in days and minutes? Can you give some insight yeah, into this I mean, massive change? Sure, I mean, it, it is a whole sea change in, in the way you know these, these applications work, and you saw in the keynote today, Vishal put up some numbers. You have uh, companies that typically have 450 billion records that need to be processed, and typically to run uh, a report, whether it's a Dunning or an APO or an available to promise, you know, you would pretty much start that and go for a cup of coffee and then come back. <laughs> and that was good. And that's the good, the, the good performance, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good Versus performance. Versus go play a round of golf or you know take yeah. the kids to the soccer game. You know? Exactly. And, and typically these type of queries are not you know something that you do you do once and you, know, you go off yeah. and have your coffee and now you have the answer. It's it's an, it's it's a what if what if what if an interactive thing, and so you can imagine the sort of. Uh, loss of productivity to the point where people just give up and don't have the right information to make the kind of decision. So what this lets you do is to not only you know, improve the speed, but make yeah. these analytic applications truly interactive. Right? It's previously it was only the transactional applications that were interactive. Now you, are, you can run these heavy duty analytics and actually make those interactive and make the right kind of decision. So it's a huge sea change. Yeah. 
And we heard, you know, um, um, from CSC, mm -hmm. uh, Siki was on earlier. She's amazing, entrepreneur, now doing a lot of cloud deployments. She had a quote, the cloud is a user experience. So for the consumers out there, they're playing with cloud, they're, you know, on all these web consumer sites. You guys have moved, are moving from this multiple screens. I mean, enterprise software, I mean, yeah. could be grueling, you know. I mean, Correct. folks out there, the administrators, the integration into the processes. Now right. you're talking about a consumer experience. How are you guys, what's your vision there from a technology? Obviously the tablets in mobility is a key part of that. Talk about how the user experience is changing with SAP's new new stuff. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, the, the, actually the other thing I would refer you to is, um, to give you an example of that is, la yesterday when Jim Snobby showed you the sales and demand application, right? I mean previously it was all about these these, these screens with uh, you know square and pointed columns with uh, hundreds of uh, fields in them and you didn't know how to, hands, uh, you know, what to enter in half of them and so on and so forth. Uh, they were good for specialists. If you look at any organization yeah. that uses enterprise applications, there are a core group of maybe 10, 20 percent of the people who are really experts in that, right? The remaining 70, the, 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 the rest of the masses in the company, they're just, you know, it's, it's too much for them. But then if you take a look at some of these, uh, uh, the new generation of application from SAP like sales on demand, the average sales, sales guy doesn't know how to use these screens, right? So the application that you saw is the is, a, is an example of where we are going. And so these would be uh, real time in the sense that as, as things happen, you know, as feeds, as, as uh, their, their colleagues uh, close deals or, you know, something happens in the news with a particular customer, they get that instantly through being able to tap into fields. So very intuitive, very much uh, Facebook-like that especially as you, you know, go to the next generation of uh, employees and then the company, they can, sort of mesh with it instantly. So that's where we're evolving to. And in fact, uh, you know, Jim keeps uh, mentioning this and that's only because he keeps, uh, you don't hear half of what he's telling the rest of the company, yeah. which is make beautiful applications. The word beautiful uh, is, is two years old now in SAP mm -hmm. and we are starting to deliver. Uh, those types of applications. You've been, you guys are getting Twitter, uh, on the Twitter stream getting criticized for having Apple envy. Um, is that a bad thing? I mean, Apple is a gold standard right now in terms of tech. You know, we talk about tech sports. I mean, Apple's in first place in a lot of people's eyes. Makes I mean, beautiful products. You know, they Absolutely. Make beautiful yeah. products so, so it's a beautiful new laptop <laughs> I have that's going to be outdated. I mean, they have a business months, model, innovation, yeah. so you know, they have technology innovation, beautiful products. Yeah. Correct. So is that, and is so, that a bad so thing? And so we are absolutely not uh, um, you know, embarrassed to, to say that because Apple has clearly set the gold standard for consumer products, consumer UIs, and we, we, we are the ones that will do the same thing for enterprise applications, right? And so... And you have uh, an app store, which is being talked about, the app store. Exactly. Well, how about culturally, though? I mean, it, 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 some people would say it's antithetical to SAP to develop simple applications. Why, uh, t tell the audience, why is uh, SAP credible in developing those types of simple applications? What's changed? So you might have heard uh, how we've talked about you know what percentage of the world's economy passes through SAP, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So that's already happening because we run the core businesses of many of these larger enterprises. We want to take that a step further, and not just uh, you know be satisfied with the percentage of uh, GDP, world GDP that we run, but really it's all about the percentage of users that we reach. So we have this, this uh, goal of reaching a billion users by 2015, right? So it's absolutely core to what we're doing. Uh, and uh, and in every aspect and every product that we're looking into, uh, user interface and user experience, having a beautiful experience is absolutely key, and you're starting to see that in some of the products. The, uh, obviously the Microsoft discussion, we've been having a lot of mm -hmm. conversations here inside the Cube about Microsoft because you know there's a little bit of a hangover from the Skype acquisition. Um, we were reporting on our editorial got kind of picked up, Bill Gates aligns with, mm -hmm. with our, our statements. Um, as he Skype. kind of got a billion users yeah, by buying yeah, Skype. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost 800 million uh, registered users. But, um, and, but that would have been a good buy for, uh, for SAP. I mean, the unification of Skype with Microsoft's interesting but the Microsoft question I have for SAP is, you guys are in a position to go after that office franchise. I mean, if you think about what you're, telling, what you're saying here is that you're becoming a consumer company in the enterprise. Google Docs and Spreadsheets is not doing that well. You guys could roll in there and essentially go after that market. Any comment on that, or is that just fantasy? Are we dreaming that no, up? No, we, we want to stick to our core competency. We don't want to you know, get uh, a billion users by any which way. That doesn't make sense for us, right? So what we want to do, you know, get a billion users for, is, is uh, the users that actually touch our applications. I think that's the key measure of success. So it's not just uh, an accounting number that we get to, 
in, in any which way we can. It's really so a mobile our, worker would count as a user. Absolutely. So mobility, not an administrator. Just mobility like. is a great example because, again, if I look at uh, the average enterprise, maybe 10, 20 percent actually are heavy users of SAP. But now, if we enable every single one and make it so easy, they can do that. You know, while they are at a red light, of course, it's not legal in many states, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you could do that, and then th that's that's our true measure of success in terms yeah, of... Yeah, Apple had that application pulled from the App yeah. Store that was, what would basically forecast DUI checkpoints. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that day. It was interesting news. And, and so someone came up with an app and would geolocate the checkpoints. Yeah. Uh, so much for radar detectors. Uh, um, Consumerization, we're talking about that as well. I mean, how do you see that? I mean, that's been a classic IT kind of a punchline. Oh, the, the blurring between consumer and business user. I mean, now we are fully there. I mean, with tablets and iPhones, I could be at my son's soccer game mm -hmm. and still do work. I can be a, a delivery worker or someone in the field in the trenches, the front lines, mm -hmm. doing work. That's here, right? So are we here, yes or no? And how do you guys see that blurring technology-wise, because in a way you have to be more like a consumer company. Yeah. And be SAP, so there's that core competency question, how do you balance that? Yeah, uh, again, consumerization, you see that in two, on two fronts, right? First of all, uh, with the kind of, uh, even with a desktop, the kind of user interfaces that you see, right? Like, like you saw on the sales, of uh, sales on demand, which is so much you know, Facebook-like, Twitter-like, and all of those things, the things that you and I use almost every day, right? So I think the distinction between what you do at work and uh, home or, or you know, as part of your personal life is blurring, right? And soon I think there'll be some sort of a merger here in terms of having a single uh, universal app that you can, you know, set profiles for, for, you know, including a part of your work information, maybe part of your personal information. So what you're seeing is the, the sort of the first yeah. step towards that. And then when you take mobility, and, and mobility has been around for a while and people had cell phones and even smartphones for a couple of years, but you already haven't seen yet are actually enterprise applications optimized for mob for mobility, right? So I think that's the next uh, next thing. And we've, we've got, uh, I think in our showcase, something like 50 mobile applications, which are enterprise applications that are optimized for mobility. And so that's the other part of consumerization. So Sanjay, in the consumer world, you know, think of Apple and Facebook and, and even Google, this notion of an app store, this, you've got a platform supplier, a provider like mm -hmm. an Apple, and, mm -hmm. and then a large ecosystem that provides most of the apps. Seems like SAP's kind of doing both. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the vision and what's the mix? Are you, a, are you the platform, you know, the app store supplier, or are you the, the app supplier? We are certainly platform suppliers, I'm sorry, application suppliers, you're first and foremost, I mean, our DNA has been an application company, but the thing is that as we go to customers, they want to augment those with what we call edge applications, right? So if you look, think of our applications are the, are the core applications that are uh, that the business runs on. Uh, customers, again, like I pointed out earlier, want to build their own capabilities that differentiate themselves from the others, that do unique things for them. And so we also have to provide a platform. And that platform has to be, you know, the applications that customers build on that platform needs to work well with their core applications. I think that's another key differentiation we, we bring from a platform perspective. We don't want to just be another platform player. Does, doesn't uh, help our customers, doesn't help us. But we will provide platforms that integrate very well and seamlessly with the backend applications where you get instant mobility, right? So the customer builds an application and you know, together with mobile technology in there, you can make it, you can mobilize it, so to say. You have the in-memory capabilities underneath, so it's a new way of uh, building applications that are both analytic and, and transactional. So these are the areas where we'll, where we'll focus on. We will not you know, try to be a general purpose platform player like you know, the Oracle or IBM or whoever it is, but we will leverage our core competencies and what customers are really looking for, which is a close tie into their uh, applications that run the business. Sanjay, uh, question for you. I mean, we're, we're here at SiliconANGLE.TV. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, and uh, we're here at theCUBE. Um, the question that comes up with mobility is big data. So what is your big data story? Bill McDermott talked about on stage, and he kind of was saying to me last night, yeah, big data is big. We've been talking about fast data. Does SAP have a big data story? Um, it's all the rage. We put out the first real definition on the Wikibon team, uh, and then McKinsey followed up just yesterday with a big, monstrous uh, report on big data. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't heard big data. Where does it all fit in? I mean, you saw some examples of that already today, right? Uh, Centrica, uh, if, you, if you look at the amount of uh, meter reads they do, uh, you know, that's enormous. And if that isn't big data, then I'm not sure what is. And so you're saying big data is already built into the vision. There's no yeah, real point exactly. to having a conversation. Exactly. You know, we, we talk about it more in terms of HANA and capabilities that it provides. 
Uh, but essentially, if you look at what some of our customers are doing, that is big data. And, uh, and you also saw in, in Hasso's uh, speech, uh, I don't know if you, if you caught this, but there are different technologies that he laid out and uh, things like MapReduce and so forth. These are classical techniques that uh, organizations like Google and Yahoo have been using to process big data. So that's built into HANA, right? And so HANA uh, is our big data. Hadoop is built into HANA? No, the MapReduce. the MapReduce, which is the algorithm, that also powers Hadoop, mm -hmm. is big, built into HANA. You saw that on uh, yep. Hasso's slides, right? Yep. So essentially, we've got the platform for big data, and you also saw some customers that are doing it, and as and HANA's new, and as Vishal said, that, that effort only literally started last year in March. And so as, as time goes on... we've seen on, that what Hadoop's done, in a sense. So, I mean, so yeah. help us understand that, because yeah. you know, the concept of, of, of MapReduce and Hadoop is leave the data where it is, yeah. and push the code out to the data, operate on it, and then yeah. maybe bring it back. So is, is, how, how, is that consistent with your vision of, of MapReduce and, and HANA? In other words, HANA is the place you aggregate it all in, but you've got techniques to go out to the, to the network and, and pull those nuggets, is that right? Or? No, the, the, if you look, different companies have uh, implemented this differently. So when Google does search, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. They use a they use the same algorithms, some of the same algorithms like MapReduce and so forth. But then they do it on commodity hardware of uh, you know thousands of uh, cheap servers, right? In our case, what we've done is to take advantage of the falling prices of memory and and other things, so that we make it easy for customers. It's easy for Google to say, okay, I'm I'm the expert in in data centers and computing, and I can manage this farm of thousands of servers and so forth, but when you look at an enterprise customer, they want something very simple, right? Easily managed, low TCO, low footprint, and so what we've done is to take advantage of the falling prices of hardware and computing in general, to bring that all into a box. It can be as small as a Mac Mini, again, as a Hasa showed, or it can be you know, a, a cluster of uh, uh, blades, right? And so what we've done is to bring that into the right form factor and provide the right software on top of that in the form of HANA to provide an optimized solution for big data within enterprises. All right, okay, so sort of an on-premise big data platform, if you yeah. will. Yeah. yeah, and that's the conversation that Dave and I have been having is about, is about HANA and well, Hadoop and other MapReduce implementations. Right. It's, someone has to beat Hadoop, and that might be a proprietary implementation or a cobbled together open right. source implementation. Right. And we're seeing other vendors like EMC do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well we have uh, a couple minutes left, Find time for one question. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been commenting about Hannah, uh, three little scorecard checkpoints. I give you guys a great check plus for uh -huh. marketing uh -huh. and positioning, great uh -huh. great effort, uh -huh. no problem. Um, kind of a negative checkpoint on uh -huh. the lock-in. Uh -huh. Okay, and then the third one is kind of an open, open, neutral rating on, do we need Hannah in the future? If clouds grow at multiple cores, is it really needed? So, how do you address those? Or you know, how off base are we? Obviously, uh, yeah. We so, disagree with the question part too, too but uh, that's what people are talking about. Yeah. So, in terms of uh, the lock-in, right? I mean, this is this is groundbreaking. And anytime you have a groundbreaking innovation, uh, you do it in a certain way, and over time, those become standards. And it's not to say that uh, Hana is uh, is proprietary, because many of the underlying technology, like you know, MapReduce and other things. Um, SQL and all these other things, these are, these are fairly standard, right? So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a lock-in. For now but, it's a lock-in. But it addresses a certain set of problems that have never been done before, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you've got to consider the value of that and over time many of uh, the, the capabilities will become standard. And then your last point was about the cloud, I think, right? Versus yeah, as on the premise. cloud grows into a, a grid or multiple cores. Exactly, and, and I think you heard Vishal talk about this as well. We're not looking at HANA to just be a on-premise solution but it's also something that we'll provide in the cloud. Ram in fact, cloud. <laughs> Didn't you call it a Ram cloud? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you look at a platform as a, as a service strategy, right, the uh, you know customers build their own applications on the cloud, and underneath that is an in-memory database. Underneath that is, is HANA, right? So we're not just looking at HANA as an on-premise solution, but it will permeate our cloud-based solutions as well. Right? So customers that want that option will have that. Well, we're excited to be here. Groundbreaking, we totally agree. We're excited that we can be here covering it. We're SiliconANGLE.TV, the worldwide leader in tech coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go to the events. We cover tech in depth, 24-7, with all the tech athletes. Uh, thanks for joining us, Sajay. You are a tech athlete, uh, like, like Jim Schnabe and the Sanjay others. Sajay Shikarmani, really appreciate you coming <laughs> on theCUBE and uh, Thank sharing you. your thoughts. Thank you very much. Great to okay. have you.